Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we're working on a rebuild on this 1961 Aljo, which is the photo booth camper for our business, Lamp House Photo. In last week's video, we primed and painted the frame, so that probably means it's time for us to start building something. Now, usually, when you're working on one of these trailers, you would think to yourself, okay, well, uh, the next thing to do is to build the deck that goes on that frame. And then you would build your cabinets that go on that, and then you'd put your walls up, and then you'd put your roof on. I'm going to do things a little bit differently because I'm working outside in the lovely elements. And I'm going to build the walls first because I've got the plans for them. And once I've got them built, I can put them in the garage, keep them safe and out of the rain. And uh, then I can worry about the deck. If I did the deck first, I'd have to worry about putting a tarp over it, keeping it dry while I build all the rest of the stuff. Uh, I bought some wood about a week ago. It's been sitting in the basement acclimatizing. I'm going to need to uh, rip some 2x4s down to make the right size studs to match what was originally there. And then uh, I'll refer to my plans and we'll cut them to length and cut the proper angles on them. I'll show you how to do that uh, if you're just making some studs to replace a few you can just use an angle copier tool and just copy the angle straight over to it uh, but where i'm doing a complete rebuild and uh, i've already scrapped all the wood i'll uh, go ahead and use my plans to transfer those measurements over it's really pretty easy and uh, it goes pretty quick once you get all the wood um, you know ready to go so that's the thing that we're going to work on first getting the wood ripped down and ready to go Hmm. We need to rip down some 2x4s to get the proper dimension studs for our wall. I went and picked up a bunch of Douglas fir 2x4s the other day. I thought about using 2x6s, but honestly, the quality of the wood at most um, home supply stores these days... So the 2x4s actually looked a little more usable than the 2x6s, but there's still maybe more knot holes in them than I would prefer. So we're going to rip it down and uh, see what happens. These might spread, they might twist. I've got a few different sizes I need, so I'm going to make sure that I have the thickest sizes taken care of first, and then I'll go to the next smallest size so that I make sure that I'm using the wood the most economically. Okay, so these three pieces are our sill boards. So they're going to make up the very bottom edge of our wall. And if you look at our plans, they are angled on the ends. So this one back here will have an angle. And this one up here will have an angle. So let me show you how I transfer those from my drawing to my bit of wood. One thing you can do is you can measure that angle in SketchUp and then you can take your compass or protractor or whatever implement you use and you can transfer that angle over to this. If you've got a really nice miter saw, maybe you can uh, uh, cut that directly on there. But uh, chances are maybe you're not that fancy or maybe this angle isn't one you can make on your miter box so you're gonna have to cut this with a handsaw. The easiest thing I've found to do is to just take two measurements. Measure the length of the top, measure the length of the bottom. Draw that measurement on one side and that measurement on the other. And draw a line between them. Measure angle. Didn't have to do any degrees or anything. It's just that that is what it is. And then it's pretty easy to just line it up with your miter saw or your chop box or however you do it and just uh, cut it kind of freehand. These don't have to be absolutely perfect because remember there's going to be layers of plywood wrapped over those to build up that curve and that's going to overall kind of even all of these out. It's nice if they're all close because that'll make your putting it together much easier, uh, but close is good enough. doesn't have to be perfect.
Now I'm not really a big fan of these little plastic chop boxes like this. They, they're really too flexible. They just kind of move all over the place. They flex a lot, so they can't be used for anything very accurate. But for this, where this is an angle that's beyond what my miter saw can cut, using the handheld is just fine. This here, occasionally you can shim it and get a little bit of a greater angle out of it, uh, which I've managed to do. So. Fortunately, the angle on the front piece was one that I could just uh, cut on my regular chop box, so that made it a little easier. <laughs> just got to do that uh, a lot more times. Uh, I'm going to move on now to cutting the ones that are marked in red. I kind of like to color code my diagram because then I don't have to make notations about what thickness each of these are. So the red ones are just a little thicker. They're an inch and three quarters versus all the yellow ones, which are just an inch thick. I'm going to go ahead and rip down two by fours to be an inch and three quarters so I can make these red ones and then I'll move on to the yellow ones. Okay, so these two pieces are going to make up the two sides of the door frame and I want to make sure I have two nice and straight pieces for that and these seem to be good. This one took on a little bit of a bow, so I'm just gonna cut that up as, as the shorter pieces. This one actually has two sizable, nasty looking knot holes in it. And I left those in this piece because uh, between them I have enough length for the, for the door frame and that part of the two by four was in pretty good shape. So I'm just gonna cut those knot holes off and use the middle part and I think I'll be good there. So that's got these uh, three major vertical uh, pieces cut and ready to go. So I'm going to take the uh, cutoff of what I just made and I'm going to try to make this entire section here without having to hopefully cut down another piece. Uh, one thing you want to do in this process is to label all these pieces that you're cutting. So I usually use letters, so A, B, C. D, E, F, and I also additionally write the lengths uh, that I've cut onto those boards as well. Just in case, you know, you get out of sync with your lettering or something, at least you can look at what measurement it is and get it back in the right place. On some of these short pieces, you can uh, go ahead and mark up several at a time if you've got little scraps sitting around, but make sure you put a little carrot or something so you know which side of your line you need to cut on because uh, if you cut on the wrong side of the line, so suddenly this is going to be about an eighth of an inch off. So make sure and mark what you're doing. Here's another little uh, tip. If you're using SketchUp on this, you know, sometimes your measurements get really hard to read on your printout unless you make a bunch of bigger printouts. But if you have SketchUp, on your phone, you can actually, once you've put all those measurements in, you can go and find them on there, zoom in on them and read them much more clearly. Really nice for uh, referencing those measurements in a very clear uh, manner. This video has not been paid or sponsored by SketchUp. I just really like it. I need a bigger workshop. All right, so these are all of the pieces that are this thickness. So now I've got to rip down some to the thinner uh, thickness and make those. So that's all of the major vertical pieces. Now I just have a bunch of little bitty horizontal bits left to cut. So uh, so this is pretty economical, really. I think I used six two by fours, so not too bad.
All right, so that's one wall. Does it look like it? Surprisingly, there's really not much to these walls. So it's basically just there to keep those panels from buckling and give you a place to attach your cabinets. So there you have it. I was gonna go out and do this on the driveway, but I was moving the furniture out of the room so I could sweep and mop. And I realized there's a pretty sizable air conditioned space right here that I could work in. I mean, I'm not building anything. I'm just laying it out. So why not? Okay, so with all of my pocket holes drilled, the thing I really need to have ready to go to put all that together is the bit that's gonna make up that outside radius on the wall. And the bit that's gonna do that is actually a bunch of bits of quarter inch plywood. I need to cut this down to strips that are the same thickness as the walls. And I need to build that radius up to three quarters of an inch. How many? layers of quarter inch plywood do you need to build up three quarters of an inch? Three! <laughs> uh, but first I need to cut it in half so that I can more easily manage it on my table saw. So yeah, I'll just cut it in half with my uh, circular saw and go from there. So it's very clear where some of these pieces are going to go, so I don't have to measure for those. I just, you know, butt them up against one another and pocket hole them together. So, so I'm going to go ahead and put these together since I know exactly where they're going to go. And I know they're not going to move on me once I do that. In a lot of ways, glue's not really going to do a whole lot here. What's really going to hold all these together is the panel that goes on top of them, which actually is going to go on the other side. So once you actually get started on it, it's really a pretty simple matter of just uh, go around and make sure your spacing matches your measurements on your guide and put a little glue if you're using it on and, and put a put a pocket hole screw in. Uh, one thing that you can do to kind of speed up the process, instead of having to measure everything, uh, so long as you've cut all your pieces pretty accurately, you can use these pieces as spacers and just put them down at the bottom and uh, use that to find your width between your pieces and put your pocket hole screws in. That way you don't have to do a bunch of measuring and marking, assuming these are accurate. Now you do want to still try and keep everything reasonably square when you're putting that together. It'll just make your life a lot easier. Be careful, be methodical, do a good job. I should put that on a shirt or a hat and get it tattooed. Sometimes I'm just not very smart, and this is one of them. Uh, so yeah, corner clamp works great for keeping this square, but uh, where's my pocket hole? This is like an infomercial. 
Tired of corner clamps that don't let you get to your pocket hole? Okay, that won't work. So, so we're gonna bring our spacer back and bring this guy him right up against there so I can just kind of make sure I'm keeping it square. And now this is not gonna keep it from moving once I've done this, but you know, if it's square when it goes together, it's more likely to be square when you take all the clamps away. All right, get on everybody. I'm going to try to get this outside curve built up today. You might want to have a sauna crafter handy doing this. Uh, it's really useful for making little tiny cuts. Uh, otherwise, it's just uh, staples, clamps, and glue. I, I turned it over the other direction. Like I built it facing this way, I turned it over this way because those little bits of wood that I attached to the outer perimeter of it keep those sticky outy bits from flopping all over the place. Technical terms, you know. They lift it up a little bit off of my concrete surface. Uh, if you do it the other way, I guarantee you, you're gonna glue it to your driveway or whatever surface you're working on, and uh, you're gonna have to run a paint scraper or something under there to break it free. So hopefully this way, I won't have to do that. I did the last time I did uh, The one thing about doing it this way is you don't want that uh, radius to start to droop. You want it to stay nice and planar with the wall itself. But when you tack your paneling down to it, that's nice and flat, obviously. So I'm going to check the weather because now it's looking really dark over there. Oh, is that a storm, right? Headed our direction. Well, of course it is. What the heck? Let's live dangerously. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's roll the dice. So first things first, I need to chop this little corner off of this piece of wood. So the first time I did this, people were really curious how to do it, as if there was some mystery to it. And this is, this is the mystery. This is all you do it to. Put it on there, curve it. You try to curve it naturally without really forcing it. Put some glue and tack this first one in. Are you, are you laying down on the job? I said, get that piece tacked in there. Come on, good work. So on this next layer, you're gonna start uh, completely coating this with glue. And you'll maybe start by tacking it down, but then that's when you start using these clamps through here. And you have to use a lot of them to make sure you get good adhesion. Let it set up before you take those clamps. Okay, well, this is just going to be more of me gluing and, and clamping stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and do that off camera and give you a look when it's finished. I don't know where I came up with three quarters of an inch, so mostly that uh, radius board is there to give you a place to attach the wall panel to and to attach the uh, ceiling material and studs to. I don't know. I'm going to think about this. So I'm going to try to get this done before it gets dark out here. Okay, well, I'm gonna call that wall pretty much done. I sort of wish I would have designed it with an extra layer on the outside radius, just to be a little bit thicker, but I don't think it's gonna cause any trouble. Regardless, when we get that other wall built, we're gonna lay the two on top of one another, and we're going to make sure that they match exactly. I probably won't film building the other wall because it's exactly what you just saw me do and I imagine there's only so much of that that a person can take. Let me say a couple of things about this wall. One, the type of clamp you're gonna want are these little spring clamps. These are a dollar at Home Depot. 
they are more expensive at Harbor Freight. Don't get the plastic ones, get the metal ones that they have at Home Depot. The other thing I wanted to say, you know, a lot of times when we're building these, we're thinking about weight. So I was just curious what this wall actually weighed. So I got my bathroom scale and it's just under 47 pounds. That's pretty lightweight if you ask me. Now, now granted, it'll have paneling on it, so that'll add a little bit of extra weight. Uh, but, you know, I imagine we're gonna come in. You know, I redesigned this as best I could to the way I think it was originally. And the way these were originally designed is actually pretty lightweight. There's really not that much to these walls. So if you're tackling a camper rebuild and maybe you're thinking about uh, just using two by four studs or something like that, it's not necessary <laughs> and it will add a lot of weight. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. Feels good to actually be making something out of wood and uh, have something to show for it. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.